When testing two-ended cables, it's easy to get the impression that cable I drives signals into the left side of the cable and detects them on the right. In fact, it does not work this way. To better understand how we set up cable I to measure wire harnesses with many connectors, I'd like to briefly describe how cable I detects connections. If you remove the connector boards from the tester, you see two 64-pin headers providing a total of 128 test points. When cable I measures a cable, it starts by driving a signal into test point 1 and then checks for a response on test point 2 and test point 3 and 4, etc. through test point 128. When this is done, it turns off test point 1, drives test point 2, and checks for a response on all the other test points. This process continues until every test point is measured with respect to every other one. This requires a total of 128 times 128 measurements. To show how we represent connections in the computer, consider the simple case of eight test points divided between the two ends of a cable, with four test points on each side. The tables you see here represent three different wiring configurations. On the left, we show the measurement that would result when no connections at all exist between the two connectors, whereas the middle table depicts a straight-through cable. To read these tables, all you need to know is that the test point number of the row is the one that's driven, and the test point numbers in the columns show the ones that respond. In the example, in the middle table, when we drive test point 1 here, we find test point 5 responding here. We also find a connection between 5 and 1. In other words, when test point 5 is driven, we see a response on test point 1. This tells us that current flows in both directions. From the pattern of 1's in this table, we can write a wire list and see that it represents a straight-through cable. A cable with more complex internal wiring appears in the third table. You may wish to pause the video for a moment to convince yourself that the table and wire list correspond. For these two-ended cables, we have wired the left connector to test points 1 through 4 and the right one to test points 5 through 8. You might wonder what we would do if we had three or more connectors, as we do in typical wire harnesses. Here we've divided the eight available test points between three connectors, J1 through J3. The table on the left represents the wiring shown in the model harness below. From the table, we create a wire list using the test points to identify pins on the connectors. Unfortunately, the pin names on the wire list do not match our schematic because it does not use the same connector and pin terminology. However, we can create a pin map in which labels you choose are associated with test point numbers, resulting in a connector-conscious wire list, shown on the right. Practical wire harnesses have dozens of connectors, some of them quite large. For applications requiring more than 128 test points, expansion modules may be added to cable eye to provide as many test points as you need. The expanded system you see here provides 512 test points. The top unit has two 64-pin headers which you may access by removing the plug-in boards. Six more 64-pin headers are available below. The most difficult and time-consuming aspect of testing wire harnesses involves building an interface to the tester. The interface provides connections between the many and varied connectors of the harness to cable I 64-pin headers. This harness shows a moderate number of small connectors arranged along a bus and relatively close together. Because the mating connectors for this harness had pin spacing compatible with our cable I CB9 board, all mating connectors could be mounted in two boards, as shown in this photo. This complex harness includes four circular connectors and many flying leads. Because of the size and distribution of the connectors, you would build a mating harness that makes electrical connection to the unit under test and brings the connections over to the tester. This drawing shows how a mating harness might be constructed. This harness is smaller than the one in the last image, but the idea is the same. Here you see one end of a complex automotive harness for which pigtail cables have been mounted on CB8 boards. The rest of the harness mounts to other pigtail cables on expansion modules not visible in this photo. 
Our technicians here at Cami Research have built many specialized cable and harness interfaces for our customers. We'd be pleased to assist you by offering advice or submitting a quotation for actually constructing your interface. Please feel free to contact us at any time.